exercising and when to exercise in relationship to studying. At the end of the day, I'm getting ready to go to bed, do I exercise? Wake up in the morning, do I exercise? Do I come home in the middle of the day, do I exercise? When and what do I do next? Do I exercise and watch TV, take a breather? Do I exercise and go to the library? So for example, these mice are spinning in this wheel, and it's just sort of a very, you know, like not so pleasant, not so rich environment. They're just sort of spinning. Other mice are spinning in the wheel, and there's all this rich environment around them. It's very colorful, there's lots of things to do, there's lots of little habit trails to run through. It's much more fun. So one has this stimulating environment, so they're, they're doing all the stuff and they're in this stimulating environment, and others are just spinning the wheel and then getting out and just sort of resting. And what they found was that those mice that were in the more stimulating environment had, so get this, you think they had more or less brain-derived neurotrophic factor in their brain than the mice who were in the less stimulating environment? More. more. So exercising in a stimulating environment, and that means also when you're not exercising what you're doing, when you're not exercising, is the environment stimulating, mm -hmm. results in more brain-derived neurotrophic factor than if you don't. They also had it where mice who were exercising were put into this water, where they, the first time they were in the water, before they were doing the exercise test, they had to figure out how to swim to find safety. It was a little platform under this opaque water, you couldn't really see it. And they had to remember where to go, like a little maze, if you will, in, in the water. And um, they found that everyone might to go in and then figure it out. The question was, would they remember it? So you're reading cases, you're figuring it out, right? The question is, will you remember it? And they found that those mice who had more brain-derived neurotrophic factor released, and when they then sliced open their little brains and looked into their little hippocampi, they had more brain-derived neurotrophic factor in their brains as a result of their, their behavior. They had more um, neurons in their hippocampus as a result, and they were better and smarter when they were put in the second time at finding that dock. And the richer the environment, the smarter the mouse. So this is a very hard study to do with people. How do you look at growth of um, neurons in the hippocampus of a person? And how do you know if neurons grew? How do you know if there were new neurons? They found that there was a study going on with a group of patients who had cancer, and they were all being given this chemical called BRDU. And BRDU attaches to, and sort of changes, if you will, your ability to detect new cells. Well, they then found that a group of these patients had just had several more years to live, and they got permission so that when they passed away, they could take the hippocampuses, they could cut them open, and they could look to see if the BRDU was there in the hippocampus, thereby indicating new nerves, new neurons. And they found in all of them, in all of them, that there were new neurons growing in their hippocampus. So we learned that in fact, new neurons are always growing in our hippocampus. It's not like you have to exercise for that to happen. That's just a natural process. That's what's sort of staggering in the first place. We thought that none of this stuff ever happened at all. It's happening all the time. And when we exercise, because of the release of things like brain derived neurotrophic factor, it increases. So, one, if you exercise, study afterward. Exercise and then do something intellectually stimulating. There was a study in Germany not that long ago where they had people exercise, and after they exercised, they had an exercise group and a non-exercise group. And they found that those who exercised were 20% better at vocabulary learning than those who didn't. Exercising increased your ability to learn and memorize new words 20% more effectively than if they had it. You're learning new stuff all the time. When you exercise, it increases your ability to learn and retain, and probably has a lot to do with brain-derived neurotrophic factor, the growth of synaptic connections, and development of new neurons. It takes about 28 days, just 28 days for a new neuron to become a part of a network. If that new neuron says, okay, I'm here, I'm a new neuron, I'm the most amazing thing that's ever happened in the history of science, and you're not doing something to take advantage of it, it's just gonna fade away. If those bushy dendrites, which are more relevant, because it happens more quickly, or they're saying, okay, 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 they're getting ready to fade away if you're not utilizing them. So if you exercise, and then you don't take advantage of this opportunity to learn, you will miss that opportunity to some extent. What's this critical window to be able to take advantage of this benefit that came from exercise? Because I feel better, I'm a little clearer of mind, but if these dendrites are like ready for action, right? 
then what do I do to take advantage of that? Because after a short while, those dendrites will begin to slough off. And only a subset of them will remain. Because it's like this. It's like, oh, we have a new project, everybody. Come on. I got to need a bunch of you to help me with this project. We're hiring some more people. We're hiring some more people. You get all these new people on because you've got, and then all of a sudden you're like, two weeks later, they're not working. Because there's really nothing that you got them doing. They're either going to leave because they don't want to be there, or you're going to fire them because they're not necessary. That's what happens with these dendritic branches. If they are used, then they will hang out. If they are not used, they will fade away. And the answer is, it's a short window of time, which is why one of the things that we'll talk about is you exercise to get these dendritic branches going, and then you study afterward so that the new connections can start forming, and you can take advantage of the fact that now these opportunities for synaptic connections to be made can actually take place, and the memory sets, it's set in place for a more, in a more durable sort of way. And they found that 20 minutes afterward, there was greater cognitive performance, the ability to learn, to memorize, etc., <coughs> for those who did the exercise. So shortly afterward, if you exercise, you are, one of the things that happens with this capacity of the um, blood vessels to sort of you know, create more opportunity for um, blood to flow through, the benefits of having the increased blood flow is that you will then have more glucose for being more alert and having more attention um, going on. That's one of the factors. And all these factors are happening sort of at the same time. So some people like to get on the treadmill or the elliptical or the bicycle and really go high intense, high intense, <laughs> high intense, high intense, and study, and study. If you all feel like, you know, I've missed out on my books, I used to read fiction, I used to read this, I used to read this, and now I don't because I'm in law school, work out at a high intensity level in the gym where you can have a book that's a pure pleasure book. Because at those moments of high intensity, the blood is not here, the blood is here, and you are not going to be able to have good learning during those moments. So you do not want to study something important while you are doing something intense. And at the same time, if you feel like you're depriving yourself of an opportunity to do the pleasure reading, know that that's a great opportunity because guess what happens when you get off of the treadmill or off of the elliptical or off of the bicycle after doing something intense? It's time to go to the library. And you're going to be much more effective in the library, much more clear of mind. You're going to have set in place a lot of important um, things changing in the brain as a result. And you've got to enjoy what you otherwise wouldn't have been able to take advantage of because it would have been a waste of time to read that case. And there's nothing worse than reading a case and having it where you're working memory. It says, oh, I get this. I understand this. I understand this. And then as soon as you get off and you do something else, it's just like you understood it and it's gone. <laughs> You want to be able to read the stuff when your brain is maximally prepared to take in this information and do something with it. What if you're doing like flow and Yeah, but we can take advantage of that. You can take advantage of that. Because what's happening there is this. If you're like doing a half, one and a half, two miles an hour kind of a thing, okay, what's going on with the blood flow? You don't really need much for your muscles. You don't really need much for your muscles. muscles. And so blood flow is jumping up and is moving into the brain, and you've got more glucose and oxygen in your brain. So at those moments, the, neuro, the um, neurogenesis and synaptogenesis isn't so important. But the vascular changes that are taking place, or the increased blood flow, is creating more of an alert state for you to take advantage of what you're reading. Not underestimate how in you know, prioritizing your time well, being in social settings is hugely important. They were hugely important for mice. Mice in more social settings, I think, had more brain-derived neurotrophic factor and more um, synaptogenesis taking place. So the answer is that the rich environment has to do with the idea that you want to exercise with intellectually interesting stuff taking place around you. That doesn't mean that at the moment you're exercising. It needs to be, no, that doesn't mean that if it's not colorful and there's lots of interesting that you want to jump to be a little bit more dynamic. But the idea is to be having it where you are in a stimulating environment. Come here at the right time after you've done the exercise. Don't go home. Not that this wouldn't still be a good thing, not that we can talk about the benefits that come from not just well-being, but also brain-related changes. But if you exercise at night, and that's the time you exercise, you might want to think about shifting that exercise to a little earlier.